Our next guest is known around here as the champ for having the most real estate debate titles in history. Please welcome back Elizabeth Story and her special guest, the owner of Captain Hunt Tobacconist in Seaport Village, Harry Hunt. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Champ, Harry, how are you doing? Good. Great to have you here. Uh, Elizabeth, so the future of Seaport Village, a uh, lot of things being talked about. Yeah. A lot of things that sound good. Are they good? Not sure, but that's what we're here to talk about today, right? Correct. So basically the port recently had their meeting and what's being proposed is a 70 acre development. Currently Seaport Village is 14.2 out of those 70 acres. The port did a request for proposals. They got 11 proposals. Only six were deemed to be complete. So what was being presented at the meeting was choosing between those six proposals and we'll talk a little bit about what's in those proposals. And there's this sense of, you know, I've done a community poll of consumers seeing whether they're in favor or opposed to the development, and it was 60% opposed. A lot of people like the charm and the quaintness of Seaport Village. Seaport Village has been here for almost 37 years, and it really hasn't changed much in that time. And it's, there seems to be a consensus that, you know, a little updating and a little bit of fresh cosmetics, if you will, is great, but there is some concern about the scale of the development and the cost of the development that's being proposed, as well as what will that do to people who have, you know, for close to 37 years, kind of like Harry, my guest, run a business down there. And so those are some of the things that, you know, we're wanting to explore here. Interesting, and that's why Harry's uh, here today, right? You've been there from the beginning, right, Harry? I've been, yeah, almost all of the beginning. The store was started a little bit ahead of me, but I've been an owner there for the last 28 years. Wow. And most of us are long-term merchants. The unique thing about the village is it was designed by the Disney design team. So when it opened, it was sort of unique in the world of malls because it was a theme park where you wandered around. It wasn't that you were going there for a specific situation. One of the things that happened was they never had sufficient parking. There was a great deal of discussion that it wasn't going to work because at that time, San Diego was a different city. They hadn't done any redevelopment and it was a gamble. But it took off like a skyrocket. And one of the things I really want to stress is the fact of the success of Seaport Village was the impetus to bring everything else downtown, the convention center, the gas lamp, and now we have in excess of 50,000 people living in the downtown area. If we had failed, I don't know if any of that would be here. And it's been sort of a, it's sort of a mom and pop it's shop It's definitely area, mom and pop. Right? It's a place to go and relax. You can wander around. We've got four sit-down restaurants, a fast food area, two Ben and Jerry's, one on each side if you want ice cream. And we refer to my location as Daddy Daycare because the old man can sit down, have a cigar, and mom can go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you feel about these different things that are being proposed? Because essentially what it sounds like to me is they're proposing a, a, a massive commercialization oh, yeah. of that area, massive. When you look at the architectural drawings, I mean, it's kind of overwhelming. The big thing that I see is how can the port or how can the city afford to have three plus years of downtime? All right, one of the considerations is to build a 2400 car underground garage. That's going to cost in excess of $140 million. But that's going to mean a lot of big trucks, a lot of earth moving, and we have yet to do any environmental impact studies, and we haven't got any coastal approval. That all comes down the road. Right now, we're in a holding pattern waiting to see if the port will give the approval to one of the six developers that presented last week. One is sort of like in the front running, but there's no guarantee that that's going to happen. Do you like any of the proposals, or do the oh, other yeah. shop owners like them? The uh, proposal from Gavcon or Prodia basically is the only company that interacted with the merchants to see if there was an ability for us to stay. What the bottom line is, is what is the rent going to be? What is the cost of the square footage? You know, I think what they're going to wind up doing is giving us another vacant building, and that means a complete total build-out. Well. 
some people may be able to afford that, others may not. And the other side of the coin to me, which is vitally important, is whether the public will come. You can tell me it's going to be, you know, it's, it's, it's the eighth wonder of the world. They don't show up. We don't make any money. <laughs> or if they do show up and don't like it from what it was before, they never come back. And, you know, two, t two people go and tell their neighbors who tell two more people, and the next thing you know, we're blacklisted. It's a risk, for sure. It's it could, definitely it could, a risk. It could work out well, too, though. Oh, and the flip side of the coin is it could be a little astronomical. But see, the big thing is we're, you know, we've somewhat been in the dock up until just recently, so we're all in a state of flux. Yeah, do I want to leave? No. If I have to leave, that's reality. You know, um, would I like to stay there for another 40 years? Perhaps. I don't think I'll be around, but I can pass it on to my sons. Gotcha. And it's a great, relaxing place. I mean, I cannot tell you how great it is to go to work and not have any stress. <laughs> and in, interact from, with people all over the world. I mean, I, I was talking to some Navy guys in Japan, and I could hear them better than if you called me from across the street. But we have to keep them supplied. That's right. You know? Well, Elizabeth, obviously, from a you know, real estate perspective, um, you know, new developments like this tend to help uh, the surrounding real estate values, definitely on the commercial side, residential as well. Do you think the people at Pacific Gate knew something about this, or? <laughs> well, <laughs> if they didn't, they do now. <laughs> and I think that's part of the reason, too, why I wanted to talk about it on air today, because I think that, you know, kind of like Harry said, that there's just not, not everybody in San Diego even knows that this is being proposed, and they don't know a lot about it. What I think is really important is for citizens of San Diego to know what's going on. And Seaport has always been, you know, partially for locals, but also partially for tourists. So it's internationally known, and its charm and what brought people and keeps people coming back, we just need to make sure that whatever is proposed helps incorporate that. Now, there are some really interesting aspects of the proposal. You know, there's some criticism about, you know, will the spire, there's several towns that already have a spire, it's not necessarily unique to San Diego. But on the flip side, I'm sure the view would be amazing. And yes, once it's done and people do like it, and if it is a hit and it's done properly, it will increase values, but then you have that nasty little construction period that everybody always, you know, you have to deal with the trucks, the earth moving. And I'm having a little trouble wrapping my head around how you're going to fit that many cars underground so close to the water, but obviously the experts are the ones in charge of that decision. A lot so. of faith <laughs> yeah. when you park your car. That's what it's going to require. <laughs> right. So it's, it, there's so much in the works. And again, you know, there's six proposals, but really um, only three of them were even full proposals. So it's basically choosing between the three. And only two of those that ended up being in the running were even local. So four locals were wiped out of the running. Do, does is something have to happen? I mean, is it dead set that we're going to choose one of these proposals? Well, the lease is not up for about a year and a half. Yeah, 2018. Okay. So d in that time, they'll be looking to choose proposals. But, you know, like Harry said, then you've got your entitlement phase, your coastal commission. you got to get all your approvals. And then, of course, you've got your construction phase. And one of the concerns, I'm sure, for all the shop owners is what, you know, what are they going to do con during construction? Are they just going to go out of business or not collect an income for two to three years? And will they be able to afford the space when they come back? There was only one proposal that um, included leaving some of the existing retail, but the others don't. So there's, there's really a lot of things at play, and it's just important to really know the facts and, you know, if you have an opinion, to voice it while you still can. Yeah, start looking into it. I mean, yeah. Harry, is, uh, from your perspective, are you, is this something, would you, would you like it to just stay the same? Or, I mean, or do you I wouldn't mind staying the same. It would be a lot easier on me. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what I do for three years. Right? Yeah. I mean, well, how, how do you do that? Well, I was joking, and I said that what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the Iditarod Dog Trail, open up a cigar store, and sell cigars, snow shovels, and dog food. <laughs> right? But, I mean, that's not really realistic. I, realistic is, you know, I'm at an age right now where I don't really need to hang around. My kids could do it. But again, we're back to where do, where do we go for say two or three years? It's a long time. And that's without en env any environmental problems, you know? Um, who knows? I do know that <clears throat> the convention center pumps a million gallons of water daily, 
So if they were able to build that that close to the water, chances are we may be able to get something. I'm not an engineer, so I don't know. Well, I'm, you sound very open-minded to it. Uh, I mean, I would expect yeah. you to be like vehemently opposed to it. You sound open-minded to it, which I think is great. But we got to look and see what this is really all about. Yeah. So I think that's what we're doing well, here today. Well, it's, it's completely out of my control. The port's going to make the decision one way or the other. I can hope that they see the bill and go, wait a minute, this is way too much. Let's rethink this, come back five, ten years. Flip side of the coin is they could go full bore ahead, but construction may not com be completed until, say, 2023. If there's a problem, maybe 2024. Now, when they have the big welcome back party, I'm sure everybody and his brother will come to the party. But when is that going to be? <laughs> that's, when is it going to be? Is it going to be in the spring? It's going to be in the summer? It's going to be in the fall? Or is it going to be in the winter? Because different, you know, different uh, facets of the of the year play differently. The big thing is when the people come. If they're enthralled with what they see, then they'll come back. Perfect. Well, one of the things you have to look at is the cost of doing this build-out. You know, I've heard numbers of anywhere from 1.2 to 1.5 billion dollars. So I went back, even though my calculator wouldn't go that high, I just added zeros. I divided a 40-year lease, which would be 480 months, okay, into the 1.2 billion dollars. And that comes up with the village generating $25 million a month for 40 years. Wow. I don't see that happening because we have peaks and valleys. I mean, during the summer, maybe they can hit it. But if it's the rainy season or it's the off season, if the convention business slows down or doesn't come, everything would become suspect. Okay, great stuff. Thank you so much for your time. You're Thank welcome. I really appreciate it. Elizabeth, another Thank great you. guest. Thank you so much. Stick around for more Smarter San Diego TV, where we guarantee to make you smarter than everyone else, commercial free.